thing. Pastor Sutton here for our, our daily devotion. I a little different situation today. I'm at home on Saturday morning, and um, we are we are in my shop, in my basement, my my workshop, and woodworking and electronic repair and well whatever fits at the time. Um, I grew up in a household where you learn to fix stuff uh, rather than that rather than having it fixed for you, or you learn the joy of taking things apart and putting them back together. So here we are. We're in my shop tonight today, um, and I have some some thoughts on left-handed coffee mugs and left-handed judges to share with you. Nothing, nothing. Oh, people are messaging me here. It's just one of them days. Um, so let's. Um, this is going to be a little more casual. I'm not going to use the full order of of morning of uh, of daily devotions for families and individuals uh, from the hymnal. We're going to kind of do our own thing. I wanted you to to see that devotions don't always have to be something complicated. Um, the word and some thoughts and some prayers, and that's kind of what it is. Although I have have an idea here, something that occurred to me. So let's begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 119, uh, beginning at verse 41. Let your steadfast love come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Then I shall have an answer from him who taunts me, for I trust in your word. And I take not the truth, the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for my hope is in your just decree. I will keep your law continually and forever. I shall walk in a wide place, for I have sought your precepts. I will also speak of your testimonies before kings, and shall not be put to shame. For I find my delight in your commandments, which I love. I will lift up my hands toward your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statutes. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> That's our psalm for today. Oh, my God, my coffee mug. This is going to be coming back on us here a little bit. Throat's not clear this morning. A reading from the, from the book of Judges, uh, the third chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. It's the judge named Ehud. Um, so uh, the word says, And the people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He gathered to himself the Ammonites and the Amalekites, and he went and defeated Israel. And they took possession of the city of Palms. And the people of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, 18 years. Then the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, and the Lord raised up for them a deliverer, Ehud, the son of Gera, the Benjamite, a left-handed man. The people of Israel sent tribute to, tribute by Eglon, let me try that again. The people of Israel sent tribute by him to Eglon, the king of Moab. And Ehud made for himself a sword with two edges, a cubit in length, and he bound it on his right thigh under his clothes. <clears throat> and he presented the tribute to Eglon, the king of Moab. Now Eglon was a very fat man. And when Ehud had finished presenting the tribute, he sent away the people who carried the tribute. But he himself turned back at the idols near Gilgal and said, I have a secret message for you, O king. And he commanded silence. And all his attendants went out from his presence. And Ehud came to him as he was sitting alone in his cool roof chamber. And Ehud said, I have a message from God for you. And he arose from his seat. And Ehud reached with his left hand, took the sword from his right thigh, and thrust it into his belly. And the hilt also went in after the blade, and the fat closed over the blade, for he did not pull the sword out of his belly. And the dung came out, and Ehud went out onto the porch, and closed the doors of the roof chamber behind him, and locked them. 
When he had gone, the servants came, and when they saw that the doors of the roof chamber were locked, they thought, surely he is relieving himself in the closet of the cool chamber. And they waited till they were embarrassed. But that when he still did not open the doors of the roof chamber, they took the key and opened them, and there lay their Lord dead on the floor. Ehud escaped while they were delayed, and he passed beyond the idols and escaped to Serah. When he arrived, he sounded the trumpet on the, in the hill country of Ephraim. Then the people of Israel went down with him from the hill country, and he was their leader. And the, he said to them, Follow after me, for the Lord has given your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. And so they went down after him and seized the fords of the Jordan against the Moabites and did not allow anyone to pass over. And they killed at that time about 10,000 of the Moabites, all strong, able-bodied men. Not a man escaped. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the land had rest for 80 years. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> so, left-handed. When King Eglon would bring people into his presence, of course, like any good king, he would have them search for weapons. And, and the typical place for a man to keep his sword would be on his left thigh, because most people are right-handed. And so you would reach to your left side to pull your sword. But, but Ehud, the, the Benjamite, a left-handed man, uh, he saw this as an opportunity. And so he had this sword made, and instead of wearing it outside his cloak in the open, he put it on his right side strapped to his leg, only about long enough to go from his, from his uh, hip down to his thigh, so he, or to his knee, so he could move around with it easily. And so when he came to bring the tribute to, to the king, he was able to go in with his sword without anybody realizing it was there. He snuck it in, so to speak, so to say, which is, which is why there's always, um, not always, but there's this, this thing about left-handed people being a little more nefarious, a little more sneaky, a little more underhanded. Um, not that they are. They're like you and I. They're fallen sinners in need of Christ. I'm right-handed. It just happens to be that's what my body composition made me up. A left-handed person is no different. And the Benjamites were predominantly left-handed. Um, but so he was able to have that sword strapped to his right side. And when he went in, he pulled it out and he thrust it into the belly of Eglon. You know, you don't have to go to television or dime novels to find to find adventure and excitement and, and gory things. Uh, the book of Judges is full of it. I mean, every, every 40 or 80 years, there's a cycle of Israel doing what was wicked in the sight of the Lord and no longer serving him. A, a nation comes in and tramples them for a period of time, and then the Lord raises up a leader, a judge. They're not judges in our modern sense. They're not men who sit in black robes on courts, or they're not men who judge the situation of people, but the, the word judge here is a leader, uh, one who the Lord has raised up to lead his people Israel and be a, a protector for them. So uh, so that's it. I, I was thinking of this this morning because I poured my cup of coffee, and um, you know I can look at my cup uh, and, and see something that, that you guys can't see. Your sight is black, blank. I'm, I'm right-handed. I guess the coffee cup manufacturers do that so I can enjoy the stuff that I that I bought to see. But if I were a left-handed man, you would see that this is most certainly brew. Uh, that is coffee. This is most certainly brew. This is a cup I got towards the end of my seminary time. It's got Luther's seal on it. I, I think it's kind of a nice cup. And I thought I'd share it with you this morning, except that after I poured my coffee and went to pick it up, it was blue. And I thought, well, they're not going to see that. That's no fun. But Organic, organic Guatemalan is our is our coffee this morning. So let's let's continue now with um with our with the Lord's prayer and some prayer for our ourselves for others and and we'll end our our devotional time today. So let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, because of your tender love toward us sinners, you have given us your Son, that believing in him, we might have everlasting life. Continue to grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may remain steadfast in this faith to the end, and finally come to life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance and grant you his peace. Amen. That's our devotion for today. See, they don't have to be complicated. Really, a, 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 a reading of the word, a, a psalm perhaps, the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and thanks be to God. You know, let us let, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. That's that's all that's necessary for a morning devotion. And then some time contemplating what that text has has said to you, what it's what what the Lord is saying to you through His Word, because we know His Word is efficacious in this time of efficacious in this in this time of of social distancing and and struggle and and tribulation and and um, there's, there's an element of fear that's going around, and, and we need not be afraid, for Christ has won all things. My friends, I'll see you tomorrow morning. There won't be a devotion tomorrow morning because it'll be Palm Sunday. Uh, regardless of what's going on in the world around us, the things that are in the church remain consistent and constant and are always. And so it'll be Palm Sunday. Uh, the service will begin with palms and with the reading of the triumphant entry, and then we'll move into other readings and the beginning of Holy Week. So the Lord keep you this day and enjoy your Saturday. It looks like at least this morning it's bright and sunny. So get outside, get some fresh air and, uh, and enjoy the day. God's peace, my friends.